Hey, fellas, John Warren with the Associated Press. I've got a yeah. question for, I, I guess, both of you, but um, I'll start with Gabe. Um, you know what, 21, what, how familiar are you with the Bills' recent history and, and the fact that you weren't even born the last time they were contending for an AFC East title? I mean, that's pretty crazy to um, to know that's been, you know, that long. And, you know, 21 years later, now I'm here playing for the Bills. Um, so, you know, it's just that's that's pretty nuts how it's been that long. Yeah, it's, it's actually been 95. So since, since that happened. Oh, so it was actually what, 24, 25? 25 years ago. And you're 21, 25. aren't you? Yep. So it was 95. So it's 25 years ago. You weren't even born. <laughs> That's pretty nuts. Um, and I, I guess just what do you make of, of your production that you've had um, and, and, and how quickly you've developed chemistry with Josh despite not having a real off season? Um, well, fortunately enough, this off season, I was able to get with Josh and Cali um, during the summer times and uh, Matt Barkley as well um, to get the system down, get some chemistry down, you know, get to know those guys and, you know, throughout the years it's shown that we've gotten together and that, you know, we've been able to build a sort of a chemistry that, you know, has brought us success this year. Thanks, Gabe. And for Matt, um, just what do you make, well, congrats on on, on, on your performance on, on Sunday night. What do you make of the aggressive nature that this defense has taken um, and it's flexing its identity um, since mid, the midway point of the season? What, what's changed and, and, and or what has gelled maybe? Um, I think the biggest thing is that we, we weren't really together coming into the beginning of the year. We had a couple of new guys in there. So I think just being able to feel each other out and um, kind of see what everybody can do and then make moves from there and keep it rolling. Leslie yesterday said that he had took, he, he stayed patient throughout the first half of the season knowing some of the challenges that he and the defensive players face going into the year. How important was, uh, how, how much did you not see Leslie sweat and how important was that patience to, you know, did it pay off for you guys? Did you see him, his patience as being beneficial? Yeah, I think him along with everybody else, you know, it was a, uh, we had a definitely tough start to the year, but uh, definitely coming around when it, when it matters the most. Thank you very much, guys. Hey, Matt. Uh, John Scott here. This is uh, I want to shift gears to uh, your involvement with Jackson here. Um, and I, I talked to Bert yesterday. I was texting with him, so he filled me in a little bit. But I wanted to get from your perspective how this started and how and why you decided to uh, to do something for, for this this boy. Yeah, I mean, it definitely started with Bert, um, and then me and Gabe training at the facility that was able to get him their prosthetic legs. That was kind of the, the connection there. And Gabriel, um, with you, um, what got the ball, ball rolling for you deciding that you work down there and you train down there, but that you wanted, especially this early in your career, to have such a large gesture like this? Um, just because, uh, again, like Matt said, the, where we go train and, and get our work done at, I mean, you see, you know, young kids that are, you know, born with these, you know, abnormal, you know, qualities that they are missing a limb, you know, missing arm, missing a leg, and, you know, they're in there working on how to rock and, you know, how to write, things like that. And you just don't realize how blessed your life is and you only got so long to live. So if you can help some kid's life, you know, this early, knowing you have the ability to, why not do it? Because you can change his life forever. Understandably for, for uh, you want to help anyone, but why, I mean, this may be obvious, but why choose a kid from Buffalo? Um, you know, just the connection. Um, you know, I'm here in Buffalo. Uh, this is my new home and I just want to, you know, help somebody in this, in, in my new home here. And, you know, Jackson was the guy that we found and we were able to, you know, get him, get him blades and get him rolling. And then Matt, my last one for you is when you saw the video that Bert had, uh, of him saying, uh, look, I'm faster than you uh, when he first started running. Uh, what were your emotions when, when you saw that? It was unreal, to be honest. I almost started crying um, a little bit just to see how happy he was and how, like, he was, he was in another world. You know, you can tell how, how much of a difference it made for him. 
So it really, it really touched my heart. Thanks a lot, guys. It was great, great stuff. Thank you. Hey guys, Jenna from the ABC affiliate here in Buffalo. Um, just to kind of build off John's question, when you hear Jackson say, I couldn't run or jump around before I had these. And then you hear his mom say, this is a trip he's never going to forget. How hard does that hit you to know that you really just changed this kid's life and, and, and did something that he's always dreamt of doing? Yeah, I think it's, I think it's pretty cool for us, but I think it's even more um, better for him. You know, he gets to live the rest of his life like that. Um, being able to run, jump and do the things that um, all his friends are doing. So I think it touched him more than it really touched us. Uh, for me, you know, just to see some kids' life change like that is uh, pretty awesome. I mean, again, we, we take little things like that for granted. And that was his dream to be able to run and walk. And the fact that he's able to do that with the blades is is unreal. And I'm happy that me and Matt were able to team up and, and, and get him what he needs and get him a trip to Disney. Uh, be able to do fun things like that. I know down the road, you know, if Jackson ever needs anything, we always got him. Hey, Gabe. Uh, good to see you again. And uh, Matt, good to see you as well. I was just curious, uh, both you guys obviously from Central Florida, how well did you know each other um, before Gabe got drafted and kind of how did, how did it go from there, you know, once Gabe got welcomed into the facility? Um, you know, our high school, Dr. Phillips used to beat up on Seminole a little bit where Gabe went to high school. <laughs> um, nah, but we knew each other. I didn't really know him until a couple years ago. Um, we were met training at the same place. So I would say a couple years ago. And then Matt, how did you then, once he got on the team, you know, did you kind of welcome him in? Did you kind of show him the ropes a little bit, show him Buffalo? It's a pretty big adjustment from uh, from Orlando and Sanford. Uh, yeah, I wish I could show him around, but you know, with everything going on right now, there's not a whole lot to do. But um, yeah, we were actually training like right before he got drafted here. We were with each other a few times, which is pretty, uh, pretty ironic how we got drafted here. And Gabe, what did that mean for you to have a guy, you know, from your hometown area to kind of welcome me in and Show you the ropes a little bit. Uh, it was great. You know, I had a lot of guys, um, Matt speaking really well on, on, on you know, being, being with the Bills and also Eli Harold, an older player as well that, that we trained with that used to play for the Bills and how great an organization this was. So I knew once I got uh, drafted here, it was going to be nothing but good things. And, you know, obviously this whole year, how's, how it's been going, uh, it's been real great. And last question, Gabe, you know, I got to follow your story, you know, from high school to college to now. Is it surreal? Has it sunk in yet that you're in this position? You've worked so hard to get here. And now you're able to like give back to these kids. Um, you know, every single day I, I I look at my helmet and see that you know I'm a Buffalo Bill. I'm a player in the NFL, and I, you know, I'm, I'm beyond blessed uh, with that. But also, you know, just being able to give back a little here and there. A lot of people keep saying that you're such a rookie, yet you're doing so much. I mean, it's not really that much. It's just you know, I feel like with you know with the um with what we have on well, what us nfl players have um we can do a lot for other people and you know when it comes to giving back to my city um, when it comes to helping uh, jackson or you know anything i feel like you know everybody has the ability to do that and i've always wanted to and i'm glad i started you know starting out hey guys uh, very proud of both of you uh, for doing this, and it's it's probably a bigger deal than you even realize, but it, but it's amazing. Uh, you've answered most, I think, pretty much all the questions I had on that. So I do want to ask you a football-related one regarding um, for you, Gabe, a rookie teammate, and that would be Zach Moss. To this extent, you saw him the other night be given that trust to help carry the the, the rock for a bulk of a, of a seven plus minute drive. That's a lot of confidence. And especially after what had happened with the fumble week before, just your mindset, knowing what you know, have gotten to know of him as a fellow rookie and just, you know, what, what your thoughts were in him doing that. Yeah. I mean, I was training with Zach all throughout the combine process and after, and um, I always knew Zach was a dog. I knew Zach was dependable, trustworthy, and, you know, he's a consistent guy who's going to put the work in strong, physical, and as you guys seen on Sunday, you know, he showed all of that. So I got my trust in him as if I had, you know, anybody else on that field. Um, 
And Matt, uh, for you, just to the extent of looking at it from a defensive perspective, um, the importance of blitz pickup, and that's something Zach, I, I know, has has done a reason, you know, really good job with. Uh, but you, if you, uh, I don't know to what extent you've been able to observe that or can can talk about that, but if you if you have and can, uh, what are you seeing there from a rookie? Which is blitz pickup is like the thing that a lot of rookie backs can struggle with. Yeah, it's definitely difficult. Um, you don't know who's coming and where they're coming from. So being able to stay patient in there and um, be that kind of key block for Josh is, is huge. And, and are you, have you noticed his skills with that? Absolutely. Great. Guys, again, thank you and, uh, and, and great job to both of you. Thank you. Hi, Gabriel. Hi, Matt. Um, I'm from the CBS in Orlando. Um, first question uh, uh, is for Gabriel, even though Matt was talking a little trash about your alma mater, Seminole has made it uh, all the way, all the way this year uh, to one last game. I'm wondering if you have any uh, uh, words of advice for the Seminoles as they get ready for the state championship. Uh, I just want them to make the city proud. Um, I just want them to do the thing, play, play the way they've been playing, you know, this whole year. I got a lot of faith in those guys. I trust all of them. Um, I would love to all see them in, you know, the great great position that they're in right now. Just one more week to see them get on top, and you know that that that'll make that'll make my whole year. Um, city of San is so small, and you know everybody in the town, and you know we got a lot of love. We got a lot of love out there. So to bring back a state championship would be great. Gabriel, how has been? How has the fit been with Buffalo? Um, you know, you obviously have a place on the field and everything. How has everything been going as you've adjusted to Buffalo, the cold weather and the NFL? Oh, it's been great. Um, I'm so, you know, I, I, I wouldn't be anywhere else but Buffalo. I'm so glad I'm here. Um, I feel like this year has definitely shown that for me. And, you know, it comes to cold weather, things like that. I mean, we played Sunday, it was 30 some degrees and, you know, it didn't feel like anything. So just adjusting pretty well. Uh, couldn't be around a better group of guys and, you know, just really happy to be here. Um, for you, Matt, I've followed your career uh, since you've been a Bill. Um, this year has had its challenges, but how much are you embracing your position now that you're healthy and it's December and there are meaningful games ahead for this franchise? Yeah, definitely got off to a, uh, a rough middle of the season there, but feeling good, feeling healthy and whatever I can do to be able to contribute and help the team win, I'm all for it. How have you grown uh, into this leadership role on the defense since you've been in Buffalo? I think just with time, you know, that comes along. Um, having a better understanding of schemes and situational awareness is huge and being able to help younger guys with that as well. Thank you. Hi guys, it's Christy Kern from News 4. Uh, thanks so much for taking my question. This question is for both of you. Uh, I know that you guys got to meet Jackson via Zoom. So what was that conversation like? And, and I guess, how did it feel for you to be able to talk to him and, and meet him after you did something so great for him? Uh, it, was, it was super cool. I mean, he was ecstatic. He was so happy smiling, um, telling us about his favorite rides and what he was doing. So it's so, so cool to see him um, with a smile on his face. Yeah, you know, I was um, I was glad to talk to him. It was awesome. I wish I could meet him in person. Um, sucks that we can't do it right now with the times we have. But obviously, I, you, you guys can see how happy he was when he came to talking to us. But um, what really stuck out of me is when he said how he can walk and run around all day and, you know, not have cuts on his leg from prosthetics. I mean, you know, that I'm just so happy that, you know, he has a good set of, good set of blades that, you know, he can use for a long time. And Whenever those get old and, you know, he starts growing, he gets a new pair. So. Thanks, guys. Yep. Hey, guys. Uh, Jeff left Coolidge from WFTV in Orlando. I uh, wanted to ask you, I got to uh, interview Jackson uh, just a little while ago, and uh, he told me that uh, he had never been able to jump before. And this kid was jumping all over this rehab place this morning. How does that make you feel? I don't know if you saw a video of him jumping around, but how does that make you feel when you see that and you have impacted someone, um, this little boy who never got to do something like that before? 
It's, uh, it's, it's truly a blessing. You know, I got sent the video earlier. He was hopping on three different balls, running around, jumping. Um, so, yeah, I mean, just to see what he came from and where he is now, it's unbelievable. Yeah, I mean, like Matt said, you know, it's unbelievable to see something like that. And, you know, like I've been saying this whole time, it's the little things like that that we take for granted. Um, so I'm happy that I was able to, you know, help this, help help Jackson out and, you know, change his life. And uh, are you guys uh, planning to meet him at some point here uh, after the season, I'm assuming? I believe so. We got to get something worked out. Yeah, I told him, I told him we got to race uh, when, when I see him because, you know, he keep he keep talking about how he's fast and how he can do all this, and we're going to see. <laughs> he's pretty fast. I'll give him that. He's running around all over the place. What um, uh, One of the things that uh, he said is, is that now he can be a normal kid like his friends and do the same things that he was doing. Um, uh, you guys were inspired by other people you guys saw at the rehab place um, uh, who had prosthetic legs. Um, is that what triggered uh, you wanting to help out? What was the sorry, what was the question? Uh, uh, you guys, uh, the reason you wanted to uh, help out is because you were inspired by other people you saw rehab place is that right that yeah i think it was i think it was that and then the connection with buffalo and then having that place in orlando it kind of all just aligned so i think that was the biggest that was the biggest thing for us all right thank you guys appreciate it yep hey guys julianne from channel two um Gabe, I want to ask you first um, a little bit of expansion on what Stefan Diggs was able to do for you guys in the second half um, on Sunday night. Uh, you know, do what he do. <laughs> um, you know, make plays, uh, balls in the air, thrown to him, and you know, happy to see happy to see him succeed like that. I mean, always, I see it every single week. I know what he can do, so it was it was, it was great to see that. And Matt. Um, how are you able to prepare for the Steelers defense and uh, what do you guys have working this week? Um, for the Broncos, come up or the Steelers? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, they got a great running game, um, some good backs, and they throw the ball deep, so we got to be ready for everything. Thanks. Hey, Matt, um, thanks for taking the time today. I, I want to ask you quick about uh, Jordan, uh, working on a story, story on him. Uh, he's having just an unbelievable season, and he's been so consistent in your time together um, in Buffalo. What does he, what, if you could shed some light on, like what specifically does he do that maybe, you know, won't, the story won't be told in stats, but what he means to you guys out there? Yeah, he's just an elite, he's an elite player. He's always in the right place at the right time, never really making huge mistakes, um, never out of position. He's just always somebody you can rely on and count on open field tackles, blitzing. He makes plays on the ball. You know, just all around, all around good guy. And I think it's hard to have that quality in the NFL. Usually you see some guys who tackle well or um, do other things well, but to have everything um, combined like Jordan does is just next level stuff. And energy wise, I mean, it seems like every, I mean, he makes a lot of plays, but he also seems to be a guy that gets people motivated around him. Do you notice that too, that you know, he's somebody that, you know, when he makes the plays and, you know, the energy that he brings that, you know, it get, kind of gets everybody else jacked up a little bit. Oh, yeah. He's he's always juiced up with the smell and salts, too. So he's ready to go. <laughs> Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Yep. Uh, Gabe, it's uh, Pat Welter again. I think everybody from Central Florida knew you were going to do well. Wasn't surprising. But you're catching a touchdown about every fourth reception. So I just wondered if you could explain how you've been able to have so much success uh, just in the end zone. You could have had another one the other night on that deep ball too. It, it's the it's the guys around me. It's the attention they bring to themselves that, you know, get me open. You know, Cole Beasley, Diggs, you know, those guys that, that can play the slide at some times um, that, that are helping me get open. You know, the O-line protecting Josh and Josh trusting me to throw the ball. Uh, uh, throw the ball to me. So I mean, it's a it's a whole it's a whole circle. You know, it's not just me getting open all the time. It's it's guys getting attention to themselves and me being able to use that to my advantage. And the touchdown dance, the San Francisco one particularly stood out. Uh, any story behind how those have have come to fruition? 
Yeah, um, Sam, Sam Fran's in the Bay. And then also Isaiah uh, Hodgins is from the Bay as well. So I had to hit, I had to hit the Bay bounce for him. He wanted me to do it this week. So I told him I'd do it for him since we playing somebody in the Bay. <laughs> Good stuff. Thanks, man. So.